Could you hear me on that, on that microphone? You got your hair sticking up. Oh, I'm not Andrew Robinson, mate. It's just the way it looks, that's it. And yours is, mate. Wingy Boxing, IFL TV, in association with MTK Global. I'm here with Frankie Gavin at the Balboa Bound BCB card. Frankie, did you enjoy that fight? How did you enjoy that fight against Kevin McCauley? Yeah, uh, it's an, we, we knew what we had to do really. Malcolm had a game plan. He wanted me to change my style a little bit, throw a lot of shots, keep my guard tight, not go on the back foot much. When he did come, just to stand there, get used to tucking up, taking some, getting the confidence to take the shots and throw back. So uh, what, what we came to do, we've done. That's what I was thinking when I was watching it. You was going through a lot of different things. There was occasions when you was getting in there, having a little scrap, but then you was backing off, using movement. Then there were times when you was using like fast hands, as if you could pretty much, not disrespecting the opponent, but just do, doing how you feel when, when you want to do it. Would you say that's a fair assessment? Yeah, we, 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 listen, he's tough. We, we knew he was going to be there, but sometimes I nearly had him out for the fourth. Pull it it was more important to get the rounds in really. I'm not saying if I could have stopped him, I would have stopped him. I'm not saying I didn't try. But uh, I'm saying we got the rounds in. Uh, it's been a great, great three months. Three months ago, you wouldn't have got Frankie having back in the ring. I was nowhere near getting back in the ring. I'd, on the third of announcing my retirement. And then obviously I, set, I see Malcolm Alvin, had a chat with him. Asked him what he trained me, he said yeah, but I don't think he thought he was going to get that call on Monday morning when he got it. <laughs> so I gave him that call Monday morning, Malcolm, I said, remember you said you're training me, mate? And he went, yeah, I'm a man of my word. So we, uh, then a couple of weeks later, he started training me. So I'd been in camp with Malcolm and I've sometimes been thinking, what am I doing? Why have I turned, come back? Well, uh, I'm doing things I weren't doing 10 years ago, really, and hopefully I'll get back to my best. What's your thoughts when you're facing an opponent like uh, Kevin McCauley? Because he's, he's got so much experience and it's like, do you think... In, in your head, do you think, right, I, I, I want to knock this guy out, or do you think, because he's got that experience, just work on things? Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I want to, yeah, you think you want to knock him out, but you also know it's going to be very tough to knock someone like that out. You know, you got to be smart, clever, pick your shots well, you got to box smart. Because uh, you know, he, he's quite clever, he knows, and you've seen everything what, what's coming at him, so he knows how to get out of the way of it. How's Frankie Gavin feeling today with boxing, man? Because uh, Frankie, Frankie's in love with boxing again. <laughs> Frankie's love... happy, Frankie's enjoying boxing again. More than it's quite emotional going back out there, knowing that I was going back out there to fight again. And really, I'm really happy to know that I'm fighting again. I've had a great camp, uh, sparring a, a few rounds with a lad from Wednesday, a Polish kid. I've had numerous rounds with Adam Harper, and you know when you when you spar Adam Harper, yeah. he doesn't stop yeah. coming, yeah. so you know. You do 10 rounds with Adam, you do 10 rounds with anyone because he doesn't stop coming. So I've had a few rounds with Brad Thomas. But yeah, I'd say Adam Arthur's been my main sparring partner. And like, so I knew whatever Kevin was going to do, we weren't going to work like Adam. So. Now, am I correct to say that you was last 147 when you faced Brooke, is that right? Yeah. How do you, do you think you're going to be able to, you're going to be comfortable there when you face uh, Luraga? 100%. I was, I was 153 yesterday. I come down from 14 stone 9. After training, I weren't going to fight again. I'm back in the gym Tuesday. That camp, got a nutritionist in Brett Smith. We start a diet again Tuesday. I'll probably be up under 12 stone. Come, come the end of this week, I have eight weeks to go to make 147. There will not be any problems making 147. I know you've got a smile on your face as you're chatting, man. You're feeling, you're enjoying yeah, it, isn't it? You're enjoying I know, it. I know now, I know how to do weight. I used to starve, I used to have two meals a day. I used to like drink a litre and a half of water a day. Now I'm drinking six litres a day, I'm having five meals a day. I had three meals the day before the weigh-in. Oh, Frankie Gavin don't normally do that, he normally starves for, for like 36 hours. And had a few sips of water. You said to me previously when we were speaking about uh, Hilaraga, your EBU defence, that yep. you, you, don't, you, you don't really fear his power, because that was a question I asked you last time I interviewed you. I don't you. fear nobody, to be fair. I know, I know he can punch, I respect him. Fear, fear isn't a question. For me, really, I'm, not, I'm not scared of anyone. I'm a, I'm a man, I've got two arms, two legs. He's got two arms, two legs. So fear will not come into it, because like, no one scares me. So I know he can punch, I respect his power. And if he hits me, it could be lights out. But the plan is not to get hit, the plan is to box smart. Obviously, I want to get caught now and again, not to get caught flush, ride a few shots, box smart, box clever, and take what he's got and then come back with what I've got. What did Bradley Skeet do wrong in that fight, in your opinion? Shit himself. <laughs> <laughs> look, look, at, look at his face, look at him. He didn't want to know. I'm not exactly saying. I like Brad, he's a nice kid, but his ass went, there's no question about it. He went out there, he went out there like a little boy, he didn't want to know. I guarantee you, my ass will not go in that fight. <laughs> that might be the uh, that might be the, that might be the title for the video, man. Sweet. <laughs> Just the way you said it. Sorry, Brad. <laughs> 
it was like yeah, shout, shout out to Bradley. It was like a it was like a bear pit though, wasn't it? When, when he was walking in there, and a lot of people said that affected him. You're gonna be alright with that. I mean, you you've been in those big fights before. I know what you're saying, but if we, me and the lad talk. We go to Blues Filler. Have you ever walked down Blues Filler on a Saturday night or whenever it is, and you're on the opposite team? Listen, it's not nice. You got people throwing digs at you everywhere. It's not a nice place to be. So walking through that Bilbao crowd, it's gonna be no different really. At the end of the day, it's only me and him in the ring. If someone hits me on the way in, I'll get some conversation, I'll pull out. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of uh, uh, Amir Khan and Vargas? Did you watch that fight? One yeah, piece? Uh, Obviously your, your, your division, what did yeah, you think of that? I, 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 I think Khan's nothing on what he was. We've got another pussy in the gym called Amir Khan as well. <laughs> <laughs> That's not me. Yeah, and his dad's out there somewhere, I don't know where he is. In the taxi. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, uh, now, uh, I thought he, uh, he, uh, he was fast, but he's, he's still got that chin problem. But he's got hard to get up though, which he's is got hard, yeah, but it wasn't really a great shot, was it? So it wasn't, it's not really hard to get up from a shot like that. Just call him and put him down. Hard's when it's getting tough and someone's all over you and giving it you. Yeah, that's when you're showing heart. Often just a little flash knockdown, that's not hard. Well, uh, he really said, there's no question about it. Amir Khan has got big, big balls in his game, more game than anyone. Once he gets hit, he has a go. But uh, he's not what he was, and he's not going to fight Cal Brook. You don't think so? No, he's scared. Speaking of which, did, did you see a, a Mayweather confronting Pacquiao in the club, saying that they want the, he wants a Pacquiao Mayweather too? <laughs> yeah. what, what do you think of that? And how do you think that fight would go? Mayweather all day long, but if you notice, he always does it every time there's a big fight. Yeah, that's what I was get his name back into the thing. Yeah. Don't brag his name, Lloyd. He's the biggest in boxing, but. Yeah, uh, always trying to get Just have a shout out, mate. Some ladders and yeah, 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 yeah. We've got Jay Turner, one of our future stars coming through. Thomas, we we'll fight Charlie Gaffey. Not me. Not much. He's not a coach. He's Charlie Gaffey. Craig Stoll, everyone's in the gym with me. Paul Norton, one of my sponsors, Norton Interiors. Malcolm Melvin, Malcolm Melvin. Adam Adam Arthur. The gaffer. The gaffer. <laughs> one of Adam's friends. <laughs> <laughs> and my son's here as well. Thomas, come here, mate. Come say hello. Say hello. Hello. What's going on? So. Proud of your dad? I've got to say, you're looking good, the vibe is feeling good, and um, I guess what, what people would be concerned of, again, it's, it's the power and the, the sort of um, atmosphere when you go there, but you're saying you've got everything sorted, because are, are you you're not going to get stuck in, surely, because like, obviously in bits like this, like, you got stuck in, or are you going to get? Getting I, right at games, times right? I'm going to get stuck in, yeah, I can't just Would go you have to back. do that to get the respect? Yeah, I've got to get the respect. Listen, I'm not a weak puncher. 26 wins, 15 knockouts, there's something there. I punch fairly hard to the body. So, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to at times, I'm going to have a little go, yeah, of course, yeah. I'm not going to sit back and throw single shots, because there's no way I'm going to get the win. I'm not going there to make numbers. I'd rather go out on my shield, out cold, and have a go, knowing that I've dug deep and I've had a go, then go out there and not give it a go. And tell me how the whole BCB uh, union come about. What, how did that I know everyone really well. I've seen how he works with a lot of my friends. I know he does really good, so I knew to like, speak to him. He's the head of BCB. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm Edward Johnson. See that, Chris? So I knew to speak to him, mate, and get on with it, mate. So I just, I knew he was, I knew he's a trustworthy guy. He's not in it for money. He's in it for his fighters as well. And then um, once you get this title, the world's my oyster. The world's oyster. And deep down in your heart, do you feel yeah you're gonna do yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. Because you've got so many people behind you and um, yeah, I'm hundred percent coming to do it. There's a lot of domestic fights out there. I wouldn't mind to fight Josh Kelly straight after whatever happens. You go for Josh Kelly. Oh, Josh Kelly yeah. Frankie, always great speaking to you. Always a great interview. Wish Thank you the you. best of luck for your European title fight. Thank you. Thanks for speaking to Wingy Boxing IFL TV. Thank you. Thank you.